How to not sub on a gig. Okay, so the footage that you're now watching is of me playing at Rockwood Music Hall, stage one, in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I'm subbing in Shub Saran's band. They play intense instrumental jazz fusion music with all kinds of odd time signatures. It's loud, it's fast, it's complicated. There are two drummers in this instance. And right now, as you're watching this footage, I am high out of my damn mind. Let me tell you about one of the worst experiences I've ever had on a stage. Yes, this is going to be me telling the story of that one time I got too high. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. Anyway, this was the second show of an evening of fusion gigs for me. I wasn't only subbing on Shub's gig, but earlier in the evening as well with the planetary people who are playing at Club Groove in the West Village. Cool, let's do it. Many of the same people, friends of mine and musical colleagues that I play with in other contexts, also play in both bands that I was playing with that Enjoy night. Good to see you. So Angelo is subbing on this gig too, and uh, he's subbing for Josh, who's on the next gig, and Angelo is also on the next gig. It's kind of like a musical chairs. It's a very incestuous sort of situation we have going on here. So. Uh, Enjoy, enjoy the incest. The music for this first gig was actually fairly difficult and because I was subbing I hadn't had a chance to rehearse it with the band. One or two of us, the new album drum solo hits on Jazz Friend. You learned the right version of Jazz Crimes? The trap version? Yeah. Turns out the trap version of Jazz Crimes was not the one that we were supposed to have learned. Go figure. But since these were people that I knew and trusted, I wasn't worried about this gig, even if we hadn't rehearsed yet together. There's a screen right here that's gonna come up when we, uh, when we start playing, like a big reveal. In situations where you're performing with a band and you haven't rehearsed with them, it can be fairly nerve-wracking, but you learn to stay focused and stay grounded. Groove, what's going on? And we are the Planetary People. Happy Monday. So uh, we got a little Aretha for you guys. Even when little things go wrong and there might be a mistake here and there. This next tune is the opposite of the slow jam. Uh, really hard, it's so. going to feature Mr. Adam Neely on the bass. to shrug it off and just keep going. Mistakes happen. For me though, it requires a fair amount of self-control to be able to regulate that adrenal response and not get too wrapped up in my own thoughts. There are plenty of these little mistakes all night, but honestly that's to be expected and I thought the gig went pretty well. So after the gig, I wanted to unwind a little bit after a fairly stressful situation. People. The most important part of the gig, getting paid. Somebody, who shall remain nameless in the Planetary People, offered me some of their weed brownie, and I took some of that to unwind in lieu of alcohol. Yeah. Angelo and I then went across Houston Street to Punjabi Delhi to eat dinner. It was about halfway through my chana masala that I realized that the next gig, well, the next gig was going to be a little bit of an ordeal. The brownie that I ate was much stronger than I was led to believe, and for the next hour, I would be unbelievably, unreasonably high. So the next gig is with Shib Saran at Rockwood Stage 1. We got one fusion gig down, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. That guy, that guy will talk to you soon. All the mental clarity and focus that got me through the first sub gig would be completely gone for the second one, and so I would have to white knuckle it just to survive. We got on stage and the first tune, Slip, started. It's a fast, oddly phrased composition that at one point involves quintuplet metric modulation. It's odd, you don't really see it in my face, but I am feeling in this moment a fear that I have never felt in my life before. <laughs> I 
seriously considered bolting out of Rockwood Stage 1 never to interact with any of these people ever again in the middle of the song. And In fact, there's one point that you can actually see me consider that. My iPad with all my sheet music freezes at the exact moment I forgot how the song I was playing goes. <laughs> I was so scared for so many reasons. The people on stage I really respected as musicians and friends and I was letting them down. There were tons of people in the audience that I knew and had invited to come see me and I was letting all of them down as well. Uh, Adam Newby for the first time playing with us today. Yeah, At some point, Mark, Shub's normal bass player, walked into Rockwood. Mark Manuden just walked in. And he's... Uh, he was subbing because he couldn't play the first half of the gig, and I jokingly offered him my bass. I mean, it looked like I was joking, but I was actually quite serious. I really wanted him to play and save me. At one point, I looked over to Brian Plouts and Jared Yee playing saxophone, and I just knew that they knew that I was high, and that terrified me. <laughs> there was a moment where I got lost. I could not hear where the downbeat was. I did not know where one was. Obviously that's incredibly scary and embarrassing for anybody who has been through that situation, but for me, it really just made me mad at myself. <laughs> my ability to play music with my friends, these people that I respect so much and make such amazing, exciting music, my ability to play music with them was impaired. And that sucks. I lost myself in the music, but like not in a good way. And it's interesting looking back at this footage because the music actually sounds pretty good. The band sounds incredible and my bass playing sounds all right, I guess. <laughs> It would have been really nice to enjoy the music in the moment, sober. I think why musicians like Frank Zappa ended up being fairly anti-drug. He wanted to experience his avant-garde music, his weird music, his exciting music with the clarity and presence of a sober mind. I'm constantly beating myself up for experiencing Shub Saran's music on stage without that clarity of mind. That experience in that gig would have been so much more meaningful to me had I not been high. Anyway, I really don't want to moralize here with this narrative. I just wanted to share my own personal experiences with the drug and also the process I've gone through to learn what I can and can't do on a stage in order to feel most fulfilled with the music that I want to make. I simply could not do that while I was impaired and it's incredibly frustrating. So even if the music that I was making was fine and my bass lines were fine and it wasn't too sloppy and people were getting inspired by the music that I was making, I, I wasn't. And so, <laughs> That's the story of the time that I got way too high. Okay, so there's a little bit of a postscript to this video. This video is all about performing while high. Now, I admit when I've gotten high with my musical friends, we've jammed and it's been a really enjoyable experience, but it's been an enjoyable experience in the same way that getting high and watching TV and eating snacks with friends has been an enjoyable experience. But personally for me, when I get on a stage, I want to kind of elevate my experience beyond the hedonistic equivalent of Netflix and snacks. Now, some people have said to me that they feel more creative when they're high, and they're able to write music that they wouldn't normally be able to write while they're sober. Personally, for me, that hasn't really been the case, and I think of my friend Ben Levin, who doesn't really drink or smoke, and I think of how he's able to create some pretty amazing pieces of art, not only visually with his animation, but also his music, and you know, I think, well, if he can do it that way, why can't I? Again, I do not want to moralize with any of this. This is a personal choice that I've made, and it's a personal choice that a lot of people will eventually have to make, because 
Quite honestly, the music industry is very much based on a culture of alcohol and marijuana consumption. And navigating that is important for your own personal well-being and your mental health. So anyway, if you want to watch the whole video of me playing with Shib Saran's band, I've linked it for my Patreon patrons. Go check me out on Patreon if you haven't already. And thank you so much, everybody, for watching.